pressure not to drop that thing. Oh my gosh, it is such an incredible honor to be included in this group of athletes and coaches. When I was six years old, I remember watching the 1988 Olympics, watching Matt Biondi and Janet Evans win their gold medals and saying how I wanted to be an Olympian someday. I had no idea what that meant, but I knew it was a worthy goal. As I entered my teenage years, I began to understand the path to the Olympic Games, and I mapped out that path. As if it was a checklist, I was taking away one achievement after another, getting closer and closer to that Olympic birth that I had dreamt about as a child. Then after a particularly grueling practice, I woke up in the middle of the night with the worst pain I had ever felt in my shoulder. It was a little bit more than a year before the 2000 Olympic trials. I later learned that I had torn my labrum. Training that year became nearly impossible, and that dream of becoming an Olympian became, began to slip away. Fast forward to the 2000 Olympic trials, and I was a shell of my former athletic self. I no longer loved my sport, no longer had the confidence that I once had, and didn't have the mentality that was necessary. I was physically, mentally, and emotionally wrecked. I finished fourth in my event and missed the team by two spots. Luckily, Right after those trials, I immediately went to Cal Berkeley to begin my freshman year, where I had a full scholarship waiting for me. And like Billy and Mike mentioned yesterday, was the 50th anniversary of Title IX. I want to recognize those trailblazers that made it possible for me to con continue my athletic career and extend it well into my 30s. <laughs> Had it not been for Title IX, I would have quit swimming back in the August of 2000. Left the sport bitter and disappointed. But I went to Cal where I got to start fresh. I found a program that not only supported me, but transformed me from the wreckage of my previous year. I completely changed my training and reignited my love and passion for the sport. Over the next 12 years, I got to represent my country at the highest level and felt such pride wearing that American flag on my cap every time I competed on the international stage. Right before every race, a whistle is blown to silence the crowd. Yet, I would hear my grandfather, a retired Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps, belt out, Go Bears! Perfect silence. And that would, allow, that would point to me where my family was sitting in the crowd. It didn't matter if the crowd was a few thousand or nearly 20,000, but I would hear him and remind me that I had the best cheering squad out there. My parents, grandparents, sister, godfather, boyfriend, now husband, were always there supporting me along the way. And I'll never forget the look on their faces after I won my first gold medal. During that medal ceremony, I was able to spot them in the hot, sweaty Athens crowd, just as the American flag was being raised. It's really special to me that I get to be inducted with one of my teammates, Michael, the GOAT. Michael, I feel so fortunate to have had a front row seat to your unfathomable career. Congratulations to all of the other inductees. I am in awe of all of your accomplishments. I want to thank the people who supported me through all the ups and downs. To my family, my friends, my coaches who helped me get here, thank you. Thank you to those trailblazers who paved the way for me to compete well into my 30s and who provided opportunities that the previous generations did not have. I look back on my career with such gratitude and pride. And while I got my fill of competition, I miss the daily grind of chasing impossible dreams with my teammates. That camaraderie is so incredibly special. I am blessed to forever be part of Team USA, and I'm looking forward to supporting the next generation. Thank you.